G'day everyone, Gareth here from Organic Growing Melbourne. I thought I thought I'd do a video, I'm gonna do a walk around and and see what damage we might have after the several days of frost we've had. Um, so yesterday we had a pretty severe frost, in fact, probably one of the worst ones I can remember. We had um so I came out at 9, 9 p.m. and the top of the spar was all all ice and it sort of started melting at 9 a.m. So we had a, a good 12 hours almost of a pretty heavy frost. So I thought I'd take you a walk around and show you the damage that has been created. Now, obviously I've gone on board in a lot of my tropicals here so I'm not expecting much frost damage um, from the plants but it did get down to zero um, but under here all seems to be pretty good we've probably possibly got yeah if you look here right on the edge here the black sapote has frost damage you can see it's all gone black that's what the black is on the branches from previous years as well but this is just over the last few days down here in um, on the Mornington Peninsula and we're right up the sort of the start of the Mornington Peninsula <clears throat> down down right down the peninsula you don't really get much frost because you've got the sea breezes but we've had six days of frost already and it's the first day of winter but as you can see my black sapote has some damage and this is caused because I'm right on the edge of protection here and there's not really any any damage to these ones here and anything <clears throat> the mango tips these are the late shoots that have come out so these are always going to get damaged if these came out a month earlier they would be they'd be like this one here and as you can see zero degrees but there's some new growth right here and it didn't get damaged by frost although this one will probably end up dying back from other cold nights but as you can see the mangoes are actually doing pretty well these are seedlings store-bought mangoes I germinated the seeds and these are about four years old now um, we've got we've got some ornamental ginger in here which is starting to die back this will probably die back right to right to the ground the new fig that I did a video on the purple heart that's still doing all right it's nice and protected under here the star fruit still doing really well still got a bit of white fly happening around here but that's still doing pretty good the dragon fruit will start to get some rust when it gets colder it's already forming some rust as you can see I generally will cut it out I surgically sort of cut them out and um, come next season I'll cut the tops off come next season we'll get a heap more growth out of these the uh, choquette avocado perfectly fine here's the here's the what is it oh, I can't remember Pinkerton ah uh, where's that tag I can see yes that's the Pinkerton forgot perfectly perfectly fine there and we move along to the <clears throat> the lamb house which still hasn't really moved at all but it is getting a lot of as you can see there's still a lot of bud growth here I think that's going to come back and then we've got the sour sops, they're going to struggle. I'm not putting anything in greenhouses this year. I'm not going to get any heaters. They're all going to, all going to be out in the elements. So it's going to be a big test this year with a lot of these subs and tropical plants. The, the Djibouti carvers, they seem fine. Um, Djibouti carvers seem to get the leaf tips just damaged. They all seem to do that. Um, Looks as though my macadamia's got a little bit of 
bit of damage at the ends here, at the ends of the leaves. But if that's what it's done on a severe frost, I'm pretty confident that we're going to get through this winter. Hopefully we don't get too many of those severe frosts. Pomelo, Carter's Red. That looks perfectly fine to me. And then the more, look, there's, there's a Jabbity, uh, Jabbitacaba. Another one, this is the yellow. And we're still getting new growth out of these. This is the large leaf. Everything under here seems to have done all right. We go over to the kiwi fruit, which I've harvested. Um, I did put a post up on Instagram, um, but I didn't film it. Um, and I've harvested them all, and I think there's only one left. <laughs> I say harvested them all, there were six. But as you can see here, all the tops are frost damaged. You can see all the leaves have curled up. All on the edges here, look at that. That's all frost damage. Some of them are just completely gone, look. Frost burn. But these are hardy. They're going to be dropping their leaves soon anyway. Alright, and then we'll move down. This is just a cherry. That's This is standard this time of year. Almost, almost dormant. <laughs> My avocado seedling, store-bought avocado. This is about four years old now, and I left it out deliberately. You can see there's not much tree, not much of the canopy. It's quite tall in the pot. It's probably seven foot. But as you can see here, we did get a bit of leaf damage on this, on this new growth. This one's gonna probably die back. All in all, we're going to probably get, you can see, actually you can see the trunk has been affected by the frost as well, and the branches here. We'll see how it goes. It could kill the whole top of this, but we might get some new growth coming out when the weather warms up. Uh, all along here is plums and nectarines. Um, they're all doing good. Um, we go over to the orange. That's standard. But the house, my oldest avocado. So it copped 12 hours of frost and it did get down to zero degrees first thing in the morning. In fact, to, put, to give you an idea, it was that cold. I had to hose down the car windows and that water froze back on the cars. That's how cold it was. But remember this is an 11 year old avocado and inspecting it now I don't see any frost damage. What I'll do is pull this top branch down and we'll have a look at the top of this. But as you can see no damage. As a mature tree and a healthy tree heavily mulched so it's continually being fed I've had no damage to my house avocado. I can't see any burns. Obviously where it, look at that, we just, we did get a fruitlet. Obviously that's gonna fall off, but there's a fruitlet from when it flowered in August. Didn't expect that. I can't imagine it surviving, but it will drop off. But again, look, new leaves, no damage. Look at that one, no. Let's go up a bit higher. No, I can't see any damage. Even these top branches up here are looking perfect. The fruit itself. So remember there was some exposed fruit around here and I was I was worried that the the avocados themselves would get frost damage. See it's already that one there's a bit yellow. That one's probably gonna fall off, I'd say. But not too bad. Not too bad at all. They look fine to me. Yep. So, the house avocado. 
Mm, look at this. Bit of scale. I'll have to check this. I'll have to go over this to see how bad the scale is. It doesn't look too bad. But best to get it before it gets too bad. And then of course, the pears, the cherries, all standard in a temperate climate. What did get brutalized was my bananas. That's what bananas look like after they get brutalized by frost. Just, they just look as though they're not gonna make it but I promise these come back. The Davidson's plum on the other hand is perfect. It hasn't, I don't think that's suffered any frost damage. If we look into the middle, we even have new growth that hasn't been affected. That could be because of the palm tree, which is why I planted it here. It's directly above is a palm tree. The neighbour's hedge and I was hoping the banana would have got a bit bigger and protected it but it didn't need it by the looks of it that looks as though it's done really well chickens no frost damage I'm gonna let them out say hello we're gonna go have a look at the sorry there's a someone grinding I'm gonna have a look at the the Fuerte. Let's have a look at the damage we've got here, if at all. Apart from possums eating it. I can't see any. Ah, oh, that's just leaves that have fallen off that one. It looks promising. Possums are still eating the top of this. This is driving me nuts. They bite the tops off, but then you get a heap of multiple shoots coming out, you see? That looks perfectly normal. So no damage to the Fuerte. Again, it might be getting some protection from the palm tree and the neighbor's trees here and the shrubs. And of course, obviously the healthier that it is, the better it can protect itself against things like this. So mulch, chicken manure. And look at it, they're making it for me, look. Yum. All right, let's go and have a look at the bacon, avocado. So, look at that. I can't see any damage. That is perfect. Fruit still on? Yep, both of them are still there. So there you go. All avocados have um have withstood the the I'd call it severe frost for down in, in Melbourne here. It's um the five years I've been running my business and my gardening business um I've never I've never um woken up to frost that bad and for that long oranges are starting to ripen. This one this one here is Getting close. Again, very, very small crop. Another tree that got really, really affected was my ice cream bean. Have a look at the devastation to the, to the ice cream bean. All, just about all tips have suffered. Look at this, look at this. The only things that have not got the damage is the foliage at the right at the bottom. But that has been brutalized. This is the worst affected plant I have. I thought that the, um, the mangoes and whatnot would be more affected, but Look at that. And we'll go over to the, well the almond should be fine. 
We've got the Chiramoya here. Yes, there's been a little bit of frost damage. The Cherimoya should handle some frost. Um, being being a more hardy, temperate climate tree, that should be fine. All right, let's have a look at this. We've got the Brazilian cherry here, and this looks as though it's um this looks as though it's uh handled the frost okay we might get a little bit of damage but i can't really see anything i'm pretty happy with the results of that and also the groomy chama it's always it's always gone a bit yellow but um hey attacking my camera what are you doing hey no so this is um this hasn't really had any frost damage, but it hasn't really looked the healthiest since I've planted it in here. And then of course you've got the um, the red, the dwarf red Chautauqua mulberry, which again this is dropping its leaves anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it gets frost damage. This will this will come back in in September. Another plant that was brutalised was my tamarillos. As you can see, just about every leaf, the very, very bottom ones, kind of survived, but these are gone. Elephant ear, that's going to die back. The other, the other tamarillo, these are supposed to be different tamarillos, but clearly they're the same variety, but both brutalized by the frost um, all the seedlings under here have been protected including the avocado seedlings as you can see they're the yakons they have been affected they'll come back in spring um, and then we go ahead to the banana the bananas here which is the four varieties that are in here and again you can see masses and masses of frost damage they'll come back i don't want this to flower now it's too late if this decides to flower now i'm not going to get any bananas or i might get bananas but they're not going to be any good they'll just be stunted and they won't grow you might as well just cut them off Let's cross fingers. Okay, let's. I'll, I'll go out the front and I'll show you. I'll show you some of the plants out there. See you, girls. Of course, the corn. That's all gone. This is just chicken feed now. So I just pluck them off and throw them to the chickens. But. Not going to get anything out of these these will die now they were very very late season even later than last year because last year i did it late and i actually ended up getting some edible corn this year no nah. did a video on my asparagus all doing really well in there broccoli onions some lettuce ready to harvest already harvested a couple and then See a bit of construction going on. A bit messy. Oh, we'll go have a look at the. Uh... Oh, let's go have a look at some of these. Hibiscus are doing fine. We've got the. Um... We've got the tropical passion fruits in here so you've got the Panama gold here I can see giving a bit of cold damage this is the Pan the Panama red that's still doing okay I've been trying to hook it up onto the palm tree here but the wind keeps on blowing it back down it hasn't grabbed onto anything yet but it has grown and we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on this to see if it lasts through winter cross fingers I'm hoping this will be protecting it all we'll see how we go and then we've got the 
the white mulberry here this is all obviously losing its leaves now um, that'll take off again in, in, um, in September the Karakara blood orange um, that's doing fine still that was brutalized it was very sick this is a rescued one so I've brutalized it I've pruned it right back this is all new growth we may get a couple of oranges next year and then we got the the longan did we get any damage doesn't look like it so really happy with that there's no damage on here at all and then the white sapote that's that is looking really healthy plus I have already eaten some they're beautiful in fact this one here might be ready oh it's fallen off see how soft that is I don't think it's quite ready now if you haven't eaten white sapote and yes these are tiny but they packed with flavor this isn't quite ready it needs to go inside and ripen a bit but I'm going to taste it anyway and um, we'll see how it is alright mmm creamy sweet mmm not quite ready but normally a little bit juicier than this mmm yum Highly recommend white sapote. Tastes beautiful. Mmm. Right. We've got no frost damage there. In fact, it's got healthier and healthier the longer this has been in the ground. Excuse me while I eat the eat my white sapote. There we go. Alright. In ground Jebedi Carbers. No damage. Older one. No damage at all. All right, my oldest um, Jebedi Carver. This has been in the ground now for almost two years. And yeah, there's no damage here. If you look at the leaves, they're actually quite healthy so I think the reason we get this little tip burn on all the potted ones is because there's a fertilizer in the in the potting mix um, this being in the ground and not being fertilized it's just mulch doesn't really seem to have the leaf burn that one over there is a little bit more but that one hasn't been in the ground as long might still be affected by the um, by the fertilizer being still obviously in amongst the root ball where this one this one wouldn't have it in the ground anymore and you don't really get that tip burn so this is doing really well and no frost damage the jujube that's obviously lost all its leaves and the um the, the buddha belly bamboo it's going to start looking a bit tatty as the weather gets colder and then of course we got the so-called pomelo here which I don't think is uh, is the variety that was supposed to be. Well, it's not, and I don't know which one it is now. But again, no damage to the pomelo. Tropical citrus, black sapote. Now, as you can see, a lot of damage. And this has been sick since I've put it in the ground. It hasn't liked being put in the ground. It still has fruit holding, as you can see. There's several. Several fruits. But whether this survives in the ground, well, that's another thing. There's another fruit there. Another one just there. Another little one below it. There's a few, they're holding on. And it's cross fingers. Blueberries will be fine. In fact, they've decided to flower again. Mandarin, that's decided to uh, make me some really, really small mandarins look. They're all falling off. 
This one now. This was the one that got really sick, so I put this one back. And now we've got probably tractor going past. Um, we've probably got 20 plus mandarins on here. So that's good. And they're all starting to change colour and ripen up. And you can see the blueberries. <laughs> they're confused. They're all flowering again. And it's the first day of winter. Mm. Alright now, I want to show you the mangoes in ground. This really surprised me. Look at this. Look at this. There might be, that, that might be damaged slightly. But overall, for a frost that heavy, look at that. Why isn't that curled up and dead? Could that be protecting it? It's not directly under it, but it could be protecting it slightly. And being next to the fence, maybe. This here is frost damage. I mean, that is expected on this newer growth, but this one hasn't copped it at all. But I'm really surprised on the little damage on the mango. So after the frost we had, which was a good 12 hours, and this seems as though it's in perfect, almost perfect condition, both of them. So I'm really, really happy with that. All right, there's a quick tour of the tropicals and subtropicals and temperate plants and and whatnot. There's Louie. Hey Louie. How are you? You alright? <laughs> oh and of course we got the, the giant bamboo here which I just went past. And the ginger, the ginger's gonna die back in winter anyway, all the way to ground level. In fact if they don't I'm gonna cut them down to ground level anyway. And then so the giant bamboo generally pretty hardy you can see the new growth growth poking out the top there again very very late to develop again this year but no frost damage they're pretty hardy the giant most bamboos are hardy to minus you know two to five degrees even even your tropical ones which in this case is this one So yeah, well, all in all, not too bad. I'm a bit disappointed about the ice cream, the ice cream bean, because every new tip now has been damaged. But come September, I'm probably gonna take about 30% off every branch anyway, to encourage more of a thicker, start to go up type because it's a lot wider than it is higher. So there you go. There's a... Oh, and the Yakons, of course. The Yakons are now... The Yakons have had it. I probably need to harvest some more of these. The chickens keep on coming in and digging them up, digging them up and scratching them. I'll have to harvest some of these, I think. I think we've run out now anyway. All right, so there's the quick garden tour of frost damage. All right, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and hit that notification bell and you won't miss any of my videos. And don't forget to give us one of these. Um, it's always good to see a thumbs up. Not one of those, one of those. Alright, alright thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next video.